Okay, so let's get underway. First of all, I'm really sorry that I'm sitting, sitting behind the computer screen. I broke my foot and um, I can't stand, obviously, and I feel a bit ridiculous sitting here because I usually like to walk around. Um, so sorry I'm stuck back here behind the screen. Um, what we're going to do today is go through a bit of an overview of how this unit works, some of the admin stuff. I want to talk to you about some options with classes. Um, I'll run you through the content we're going to cover, but the main focus will really be just getting you um, confident and um, comfortable with the learning environment because it's a bit different in this unit probably than other units you've had before. Um, so we'll start out with some introductions. And I'm Kate. I'm the unit coordinator um, for this unit. I taught this unit for the first time um, and designed it uh, to run for the first time last year. Um, it's designed to be the core unit in the um, social technologies minor. How many of you, of you guys are taking the social tech minor? A few, okay. And so lots of you are probably in the old, the old Bachelor of IT and you're finishing up with electives? Okay, cool. All right, so um, I think it's a, a good unit for an elective, um, but it also feeds really nicely into that minor. Um, so with my other hat on, I'm the course coordinator for the Master of Information Science, and I teach in that program as well. I tend to teach the subjects around social technologies, emerging technologies, and online services. Um, this semester, I'm with you guys. I'm also teaching in two other master's units as well. Um, I've been at QUT for six years, um, and I've uh, been an associate lecturer and a lecturer and now a course coordinator. Um, this year, I'm also doing the early uh, career academic development program um, and working on some teaching and learning projects. So that's a tiny bit about me. Let me tell you a little bit about my research, because that's really probably what's the most relevant to you um, in terms of what we're going to be doing here this semester. I don't know why that's cut off. Okay, so um, I'm a social media researcher. I call myself a social scientist, so I'm interested in people's experience of things. Um, I've just finished my PhD last year. Um, my PhD study looked at new mothers' information experience in social media. So I looked at how they find, use, save, share, um, create and co-create information in social media spaces. One of my other research focuses around social media is in teaching and learning. So I'm currently working on a project where we're looking to design a, a whole of course framework for multi-mode course delivery. So the master's program that I coordinate um, runs both on campus and online. So we do this kind of hybrid mode where everybody does some online stuff and the on-campus stuff just happen to have a bit of extra on-campus contact. So we're looking at how we can um, create a sustainable model, um, a framework for the best possible experience for students in those environments. And we use a lot of uh, social technology in our teaching, um, so that's a big part in the, uh, the research as well. I've also done research around the professional identity of individuals, so you as, a, as an individual person and your professional identity, um, and looked at how personal professional identities intersect with organisational identities in social media. So, you know, what does it mean for you as a person to establish yourself and have a professional presence, and how does that interplay with the presence you might have for your organisation? I've also done a lot of research, uh, practice-based research, around applications of social media in information practice. So for service delivery, um, to co-create with customers, to uh, add material to your information collection. So that's a little bit about me and my research. We have two other people teaching with us this semester. I don't know why my slides are cut off like that. You can only see half of Anna's name. Um, so we have Anna Lagos. Anna is going to be working with us online. She'll be um, facilitating discussions on the uh, unit site, and she's also going to be uh, marking in this unit as well. And Anna is in the online classroom now. We also have Kay. Kay has just started a professional doctorate. She is um, a teacher. Oh, Anna, have you still lost sound? Okay, great. Cool. Kay, can you hear me okay? Okay, great, thanks. Um, so Kay has just started a professional doctorate. She's doing some research around um, social technology and education. Kay will also be popping up in the online community as well, um, asking questions, commenting on your blogs, sharing resources, and she's also going to be marking in the unit too. So if you ever want to get our attention when you're posting on the unit site, you can um, just at mention us and we will see your post, although we'll be flicking through the feed to make sure we catch everything anyway. I hope all my slides are not like this. They are, and that's really annoying. 
Okay, um, so what is this unit about? Um, three main things. First of all, we're going to look at the role of social tech in everyday life. So um, we're not going to be talking a lot about businesses and enterprise in this unit, but instead we're going to be focusing on how people use social technology as part of their everyday life so that you can understand how people are already using it, which will help you to de design solutions um, that uh, work for the people you're designing them for. Um, so we're going to look a lot at the in the beginning of the semester at how you, as an individual, use social media. You'll be creating a persona poster for yourself for the first assignment, exploring how you um, experience social media. You're also going to um, have the opportunity to participate in um, a research project, and that project is around social media data and the activity that you have on our unit site in this unit. So um, we'll have uh, Kirsty Kiddo from the Learning Analytics Project in in a couple of weeks' time, and she'll talk to you about um, what opportunities you have in terms of grabbing your data and looking at the way you're using um, the functionality around the unit site, which can help you with that assignment. We're also going to look at the role and impact of social tech in society. So we'll look at um, movements that have sprung up around social technologies. We'll look at things like citizen journalism. Um, we'll look at crisis and um, disaster management and how social media can help with that as well. At the beginning of the semester, we'll also be looking at theoretical concepts and perspectives that can help you to understand how people use social technology in everyday life. And we'll be drawing from communications theory, information theory, um, design and IT. So it's a bit of an eclectic unit where um, I want to introduce you to perspectives that you might not have already seen um, in your course and to be able to apply those to what we're learning about here. Okay, so along the way, you're also going to learn about some other things. In the cu our first couple of weeks of semester, we'll be focusing on the first three things on the screen here. So we're going to look at how you can create good content. What does it mean to write a good blog post? And how do you ensure that you can craft your content for maximum impact? We'll also talk about things like using images, um, what you can and can't do with copyright and creative commons. Um, and you'll be creating your own content as we progress through the semester. We're also going to talk about critical analysis and higher order thinking. Have you guys done much writing in your course? No? Yes, no, maybe? No? Okay, so last year um, I got to about week four or five and I realised that the students actually hadn't done a great deal of writing in their course. And because of that, um, I think sometimes the higher order thinking, like the critical analysis and questioning um, what you're reading and what you're doing and forming your own opinion, sometimes that's harder to do. So we'll be doing some work around helping you to um, come up with ways to critically analyse, not just describe things, but really get to the heart of what's going on in there. And so there'll be some scaffolding in there to help you with the assessment. I'm also going to get you to think about your online identity in general, how that relates to the way you use social media, where, um, how your identity maps across different social media spaces, um, and I'm also going to get you to think about the type of identity that you want to craft as a professional um, and get you to start working on that in uh, this unit in particular. Lastly, I mentioned before that you'll have access to this um, data if you choose to opt into the research project. Um, but if you do that, you're going to have an opportunity to learn about how you participate in our online community, um, which is really useful, I think, in terms of understanding uh, the way you use social media. But it will also be useful for you in terms of gauging what you're doing compared to what your peers are doing. Um, and uh, that is, it is important in this unit because you're going to get a mark for contribution to the learning community. So you need to make a contribution to the community and this will be one way for you to track that contribution. By the way, if you've got any questions, please yell out as we go through. Okay, so let's talk a bit about how the unit is going to work. So kind of the underpinning foundation of this unit is the idea of a community of learners. So I think that learning is social and that we learn by doing things together. I think that me sitting here and talking at you is just about the worst model um, there is for learning. Um, so you probably won't see me do it again all semester. Um, so we want to build a community and then we want to get you to do something that um, we could call connected learning. So this is like an approach to learning design where um, everyone's in a community together and working together. And this is how this unit has been designed. So it's centered on production. So we don't want you to sit here and have me um, 
you know, spew out content for you to absorb. Instead, we want you to do stuff and create stuff. So you're focused on actually doing, not just listening. We want you to tailor the assessment so that it aligns with your interests because when you're it's going to be a whole lot more meaningful to you um, in right now, um, a whole lot more interesting right now, but also meaningful to you in future. Um, connected learning, we tend to have a shared um, purpose. We've got this purpose around what we're actually learning here. Um, it's about open networking. So this is um, one of the reasons that I don't use Blackboard for this unit. Blackboard is this great big walled garden of really outdated, clunky technology, and you're never going to experience that kind of technology as a social media practitioner when you get out of the university. Um, it's crap, really. And so we really want to take this unit out of that walled garden, um, this protected space, and get you working in public so you can get used to creating content that people are going to see um, we can create connections to content outside the site without there being a Blackboard is just not the real world. So I'm going to encourage you to um, be using a whole lot of different online platforms across the semester. Um, we'll look at the platforms that you're using in the coming weeks and see how you can use those as part of what you're doing here. Um, but I'm very happy to be led by you guys in terms of what um, platforms you would like to be using during the semester as well. Um, and I guess one of the big things with connected learning is the idea of um, peer culture. So this is about um, having a community that works in a meaningful way. So it's not an arbitrary, oh, I've got to comment on this post because I've got to make five comments a week in order to get a seven kind of thing. And that's not the rule, by the way. It's not five comments a week to get a seven. Um, but we want you to actually make meaningful connections with people around the content. Um, so that's what we're going to be working towards. And this is why <clears throat> we don't have tutors in this unit. We have instead online community managers. And so um, Anna and Kay are going to help you to form a community by stoking conversation, helping you to start and continue discussions, helping you to direct your thinking. And then a little bit later in the semester, you'll see us retreat a little bit. We won't be as present in the network because we want it to be your network and we want you to drive it. So it's up to you to shape how you want this to play out. There's some more information about this on the unit site, so I won't keep rabbiting on about it, but do have a read. It's on the About page. Um, and it will help you to understand what we're doing. The slides only look like this for us, by the way. They're perfect on my phone and perfect in the classroom online, which is annoying. Sorry? Um, uh -huh, thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, this is a great quote, I think. Play is our brain's favorite way of learning, which is very true. Um, we have this uh, running... Uh, this is my sister at the front, by the way. I had to get someone to wheel me into the classroom. And I'm just going to tell a story about her kid, so um, she'll probably pipe up in a second. We have this ongoing debate about how much screen time is reasonable in our family. And I think that sitting in front of an iPad and gaming is no different to what I did with, as a kid, which was have my nose in a book. I think it's exactly the same thing. Um, uh, I see some mm, up the back. I think it's a different form of text, right? Like, I, you know, I'm a librarian by trade, I want the kids to read. But um, these environments that kids are immersed in now are the kinds of things they're going to be using when they're out in, in the world. Um, and I think uh, if we can kind of uh, cultivate this sense of play around learning, it helps us to have fun. And the best way, sorry, it helps us to learn while we're having fun. And the best way to learn is to play and make mistakes. So um, I make mistakes all the time. You're going to see me make lots and lots of mistakes during the semester. And every time I make one, um, nothing, you know, like I'm not going to give you the wrong grade or anything, but I will do things on the unit site and it will break and then I'll have to wind it back. And I always use those as opportunities to talk to you about what I've done and why it broke and how we might um, have come up with a better strategy for that. So failing forward is something I'm really um, big about. And that's why we do the assessment in this unit in a really scaffolded way. So you've got an opportunity to start blogging. We'll give you some feedback as you start blogging. Then we we'll get to the middle of the semester. We'll mark the blog posts that you've done to date. And then you've got some more opportunity to improve before we get to the end of the semester when we mark the last of your blog posts. So don't be afraid to just get in and try things and make mistakes because you've got time. Um, to fail forward and learn as you go. Okay, so I don't believe in the idea of assessing learning. I, we have to assess learning, right? So we've got to give you assessment because that's the way that formal education works. 
Um, but I think that um, assessment is much more meaningful when it's a learning tool. So the way this unit is designed is that you will compete, um, complete the assessment progressively um, for the bulk of the assessment and you'll be using it as an opportunity to learn. So as you go out and do a bit of reading around the topics you're going to blog about, you'll be learning about that content um, as you go. So uh, it, every part of the assessment in this unit is geared to allow you to actually learn through doing it. And this is why I don't really mind if you, for example, you can post a blog post and then a week later you can have an insight and go back and edit it. Like to me, I don't care. It's what the medium's about. As long as you make an update note, you can go back in there, um, do more work as you go through. Um, if, it was, if we were just about assessing learning here, then no. We'd probably say that's it. You make your post and you can't edit it. But that's not what we're about. Um, the other kind of underpinning principle is you can't learn about social technology by sitting in a classroom and me talking to you about social technology. You actually have to use it. So a lot of the learning in this unit is going to happen online using social technologies. Um, in further, um, down the track when we have more classes, um, they'll be uh, broadcast on Periscope instead of in here. So you can watch uh, live the whole thing rather than just uh, seeing the slides on the screen. So this is kind of the overarching view of how I teach this unit and pretty much every unit. You're not going to see me standing up the front again talking at you and I'm not going to pour information into your head. Instead, my job is to share stuff with you, um, ideas and knowledge and enthusiasm for the content area, to create, curate the resources you need to be able to do the learning you need to do, to facilitate conversations and experiences and help you make connections with each other and also outside the university. Um, and to manage the online community. So those are my jobs. Um, it's not about standing up here and talking at you. Does anyone like long lectures? No? Good. Because neither do I. So um, you're not going to have three to four hours a week of classes in this unit, um, ever. But what you will have is um, 12 hours a week over 13 weeks of work to do. Um, and that work will vary in different weeks. Some weeks there will be a class in there, some weeks there won't be a class in there. And what I do is um, put the resources together um, and schedule the classes in a way that makes trade-offs. So if we've got a class one week, there won't be as much work to do online. Um, and it will all kind of fit in that way. So there are kind of four aspects to the learning design in this unit. The first one is the workshops. Now we've got the absolute worst room possible for running workshops, so I'm going to see if we can get a room change. Um, this is apparently the only room left on campus for this size at this time, which is kind of mind-boggling. Um, so we will have some workshops, but those will be active, um, and I'm going to talk to you a bit, a bit more about those. I can just see someone typing, so I'm going to hang on for a second. I'll keep talking. Okay, so um, I noticed last time the unit was run, the class size was quite small. Okay, it was, um, I think we ended up with 65 last semester and we're currently at 77, so we'll probably even out somewhere in the low 70s. I think it's a good size for this kind of unit because um, you want to be able to see what's going on across the network and not too big is good for that. Okay, so every Monday morning at 9am I'll release a set of online learning materials for you. There'll be um, blog post style content, there'll be um, a weekly intro video every week at a bare minimum you've got to watch the weekly intro video. That's where I tell you about everything that's going on that week um, and what you need to know for the week. And never more than about eight minutes long, so you can watch it while you're waiting for your coffee at the coffee shop and you can definitely find time to do that. If you watch that weekly video every week and keep an eye on the blog, you're not going to miss anything important. Um, there'll also be some readings there for you to do. The readings aren't all going to be academic readings. There will be quite a lot of blog posts and trade publications in there as well. Um, your task will be to work through that material and then complete um, an activity related to that material. So some weeks that will be a critical reflection style blog post um, where you'll write uh, about 500 words about something. Um, the posts are due on Sunday night at midnight, so you've got the whole week to do it. And don't forget, you can go back and edit later. So you don't have to produce your best quality work in that first one week. You can edit right up to we mark those first posts. The other aspect is online engagement, and this is really important. Um, it was really interesting for me to see how this online engagement worked with undergrads last year. This is a model I use uh, quite often with uh, master's students. 
But everyone was really tentative about getting started with talking to each other online last year. I'm not sure if that was because we were using Google Plus instead of the unit site as our kind of hub, so I hope that it's a bit easier for you on the unit site. But it is really important that you get in and start talking to each other because I'm going to mark you on it. Um, it's not just about volume, though. It's about making quality contributions. So um, don't go and write on 10 blogs, hey, nice post, and think that you're going to get a 7 for online engagement. You've actually got to critically consider the work and engage with it. So I'm after you know, really quality engagements rather than heaps of volume. Okay, so the online learning environment for this unit is the unit site. Everything is on here. So your blog is here, the learning resources are here, the assessment information is here. This is the one-stop shop. That's it. Um, when you go to submit an assessment, it will all be submitted electronically and the instructions will be here. Um, it probably won't be through Blackboard at all. I usually just use a Dropbox drop-off app, so you can just dump your files in there for me to mark. Um, but everything is here. So you kind of need to know and get to love this site because you're going to spend some time on there. Um, the assessment in this unit isn't just about um, you creating assessment for yourself, but um, because you have to go out and engage with each other's posts, everything that you create becomes a learning object for your peers as well. Um, so this is really nice because, you know, usually in a class you'll sit there and someone will tell you stuff and you get their perspective on things. But this way you get 70 other people's perspective on these things as well. Um, and I find that students learn uh, just as much, if not more, from each other as they do from me. So this is a really important part of the unit. Okay, so workshops. Um, how many of you are likely to come to class each week? Like, honestly, really. If you're going like, to get to week four and say, I'm not going to come anymore, don't put your hand up. I don't care if you don't come, but I would like to know now. Okay, cool. What about online? Who wants to come to class? So I'm going to give you a poll for what you want to do. Did you want to ask a question? Oh, yeah, yep. So the question at the back was just from, um, can I leave earlier if I need to, if I've got to go back to work? Absolutely. So I will record every class, regardless of whether it's a workshop or a lecture. So sometimes we'll have a guest lecture. Um, the workshops don't tend to record as well. I try to run the microphone around the room. That's going to be a problem for me this semester because I can't walk. So I might have to get you guys to help me a bit with that. Um, but I try to run the microphone around the room to capture as much discussion as I can. But quite honestly, um, I wouldn't watch a two-hour lecture recording, so my expectation is that um, if you don't come to class, you're possibly not going to watch the two-hour recording. So I tend to create complementary resources for you to work through rather than you having to sit through the whole recording. So my advice would be play the recording while you're doing something else and listening to it in the background and then do the other work that I set out for you as well. Um, plus, discussion-based classes, when they're recorded, get fairly boring, I think. They're not, they don't work particularly well. Um, I've been teaching online for a long time, and I remember when we, probably really up until about three or four years ago, quite a few people were still teaching by putting an MP3 recorder in the middle of the table while people had discussion in class, and then posting that on Blackboard and expecting people to listen to it. That's just not... That's not great. That's not a good experience. So, um, you know, just let me know what's working for you during the semester and we can tinker and tailor things to, to work for you guys. But I'm going to put a poll up around the kind of number of classes you want to have, whether you want to have them on campus, whether you're open to having them online, um, you know, whether you are actually going to watch the recording, whether you are actually going to come. Um, and please be honest when you complete it because it's not about um, me working out whether you're a good or bad student. I just don't want to teach if you're not, like, I don't want to stand here and teach at you if that doesn't work for you. So we can talk about that some more. So I'll put a poll up over the weekend, and if you can complete that, that would be great. Um, by middle of next week, we'll confirm things, but there won't be a class next week. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of a site tour, and I usually do this um, live on the site, but sometimes um, doing a screen sharing in Adobe Connect can cause the audio to break up for other people. So instead, we're going to do it with um, some screenshots. I'll give you a quick overview, and then there'll be a video on the site that tells you more about the various functionality on there. It's not rocket science. I'm sure you'll be fine. Okay, so this is basically the same sort of structure that I use on 
um, Blackboard, so there's an about page with information about the unit um, at the top. I mentioned that before. Please have a look because that tells you about the learning design. So this is the home page. It's kind of designed to be a one-stop shop. So you can, there's some important things for you to do up the top, and then in the middle is links to all of the key stuff that you'll need during the semester. So you can get through to the teaching team blog there, the learning materials pages, assessment, the schedule, which will go up early next week, the activity wall, and our contact details. Oh. Well, that's annoying. Okay, we're going to have to screen share for a sec. Sorry, these teaching t computers, we have to kind of reinstall everything every time. It's very annoying. Okay, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. Just had to install a plugin. Okay, here we go. So those of you in Adobe Connect, this may slow down your connection, but it will all be recorded on Echo360 and there'll be a video as well. Okay, so um, down the bottom half of the page, there's three main sections. On the left-hand side is the student blogs. So here, under recent posts, you'll see um, the latest 15 posts across the network of your blogs. Um, under that, you'll see the latest comments, and there's a really daggy comment on here from when I was testing that I haven't, I forgot to delete, so it's just there. Um, in the middle column is all the stuff from us, from the teaching team. This is from our blog. Um, up the top, there's an email subscription link. Unless you're like um, really into checking RSS feeds regularly, I suggest you sign up for the email just to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, I think it sends you a, uh, like a aggregated all the posts for a single day at the end of the day. Okay, oh good, Kay, thanks. Um, okay, so uh, there's also the recent posts there. I'll just show you the latest five posts from us and there'll be comments there as well. Um, and there's also an archive to go backward. Now, I'm fairly prolific with announcements because I think I don't want to send you a long announcement with 50 things in there. So sometimes you'll see two straight after each other. I'm just chunking up the information so you can get the info you need quickly. On the right-hand side of the screen is the social stuff. So you'll see who's online here. Um, there is also a plug-in to show you when your friends are online, but I'm having some problems with it, so I'll work on that over the weekend and get that up for you. Uh, and then there's a Twitter feed here, but um, do you guys use Twitter? No, nobody, yeah, okay, there's a couple. Nobody last year used Twitter, and it's probably one of my top two um, online spaces. It's really interesting. So the profession that I teach into, um, information management, um, Twitter's huge, like really huge. If you don't have a Twitter profile, on your CV, it's a problem. Um, yeah, it's just interesting that you guys aren't into it. It was a whole new world for me. Okay, so that's the homepage in a nutshell. Um, have a look through it, and like I said, there'll be a, a detailed tour in a video as well. I'm just gonna stop this before that gets annoying for them. Okay. All right, so. Um, this is our teaching team blog. This is like the announcements on Blackboard, and that's basically what we post to the blog. So keep an eye on that. Um, there's been a few administration things here. Um, I'm going to move this site to a new server because it's a bit slow. So over the weekend, one evening, we'll be doing a server move. I'll put a post up so you know when that's happening, uh, and then I'll remind you um, as it's about to happen as well. It possibly won't get a great deal faster because these multi-site um, installations can be a bit laggy. Um, okay, so that's our blog. Then the assessment information is all on the assessment page. Now, underneath, further down, there's a whole bunch of information um, that's really useful, and I'll give you an overview of that in the video as well. There's information there about referencing. Referencing's a bit different in blog posts. I don't want to see an APA reference list on a blog post, ever. You don't, that's not a blog thing. We use contextual hyperlinks in blogs to credit other people's work rather than an APA reference list. Nobody believes me when I say that, and we always get APA reference lists at the first submission, but seriously, it's torturous to format a bibliography, so don't, just don't do it. You don't need to. It's all good. Um, if you need to do a reference list for a piece of assessment, I'll tell you. 
I can't see that you will really need to do one in this unit because all the assessment is essentially social media content. So as long as you're crediting by using a hyperlink in the text or putting a source under an image or whatever, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's it. It's much easier for me to follow than reading a whole reference anyway. Okay, so our contact details are all here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it would be great if they'd accept it for a thesis. I was very lucky and had a research assistant help me with my, fix my references stuck for my thesis. It's torturous because it ends up being like 20 pages long. You've all got that to look forward to. Um, so getting in touch with us, um, if you have any questions at all about the unit or the assessment, please post them on the activity wall. Um, my inbox is an absolute disaster zone at this time of semester because I'm a course coordinator and things get lost in there. So if you need to get us quickly, um, if something's like urgent and important, you can shoot me a text message or give me a call. Otherwise, if it's personal and you're okay to wait a little bit, send it to me by email, I'll get back to you within two days. Um, or if it's just not personal, just post it on the activity wall. Um, Anna, Kay and I will be around the site at various times during the day, every day. Um, and so we'll be there to answer your questions when you need them. Um, our Twitter handles are there too. A really good, quick way to get me is to um, DM me on Twitter or just mention me. Uh, and I'll get back to you. So each week there'll be a weekly learning resources page and it will be linked here from the weekly learning resources um, and on those pages will be all the resources you need for that week. So because I want you guys to use contextual hyperlinks and write good blog posts in a kind of conventional blog way, that's the way I format my content as well. Um, but I recognise that then you've kind of got to go through and find all the links to get to the resources. So I always put a little section up the top with this week's must-read items. So if you just want to get into the reading, you can jump in and do that. Uh, okay. Oh, that's so annoying. Can you guys online see the slide or have you got a PDF warning? Okay. Just give me one sec. Um, how will I do it? Sorry, just going to log in over here. Okay, those of you online, I'm just quickly logging in on my laptop so I can fix that slide issue. It won't be a minute. Does anyone have any questions while I'm doing this? Just yell out. Okay. Sorry, just logging on. Almost there. Actually. Sorry, guys. Almost there. Almost there. Okay, here we 
you go. This is the only problem with streaming online, is that none of the virtual classroom tools are actually very good, and um, it's really frustrating because something always goes wrong. to load. Oh, excuse all my email. Okay. Okay, here we go. That's better. Okay, so these are the week one resources, which I think you've all found your way through because you're here. There is some stuff on there for you to do. Nothing too difficult. You just need to introduce yourself and set up your blog. I think I mentioned in there that you should change your theme on your blog, and then I realized I forgot to install the themes for you. So I'll do that this afternoon, and you can go back through and choose a theme. If you've got a favorite theme you want to use, just um, uh, shoot me a message on the site or shoot me an email, and I'll install it for you so you can use it. Um, so the next tab across on the navigation is the student directory um, and this is a list of all your profiles on the site. So you can go in there, have a look at people's profiles, it's like a Facebook wall basically um, and you can see who they've been talking to and what they've been doing around the site, what their latest post was and that kind of thing. Um, then there is the student blogs page which is a direct link to everyone's blog. You can also get to their blogs through, the other, um, through their profile as well. And finally, the activity wall, which is basically like a Facebook wall for the unit. Um, this is where you can post just random questions or whatever you need. Um, sometimes I end up putting forums on these sites, so you've got a structured question and answer space if you want um, that. So let me know how this wall works out for you. Um, and if you want a forum space, I can put that on. Instead of putting a forum on, what I'd rather you did is, if you want to ask a question about assignment one, go to the assignment one page and leave it in a comment there. That way, all the information about the assignment's on the same page, and so you can find what you need when you need it. Okay, and just um, one bit of functionality you might need to know about in the short term is the top right-hand corner under the howdy, whatever your name is, you can get to your profile there. Um, you can access your notifications, there's private messaging, you can see access your friends and change your settings on the site as well. There is other, um, some other functionality, like there's a plugin on here called Reader, which allows you to follow different blogs around the network. Um, and you can tell you're following one if it's got a red heart at the top of it when you're looking at the screen. So if you want to follow, click on the heart at the top of the screen, um, and then that will add it to your reader for you. And your reader is visible in the dashboard. So if you don't use RSS feeds, but you want to make sure that you're reading certain people's blogs every week, that's the best way to do it. Okay, so let me tell you about the assessment in a little bit more detail. Assignment one is a persona poster. And I use the term persona poster because it's inspired by a persona poster or a persona, but it's more a poster, right? So you can put more information on there. These will be, um, just will have an exhibition on the cube. So you can decide whether you use one screen or two screens. If you use one screen, you can swipe your poster across and see the second um, page of it on there. I think people last time, um, they either found that, some people found that one screen was too tight, um, but some people had trouble filling up two screens. So I would say spend some time planning and see how you go with that. Um, the dimensions and everything will be on the site. So we'll have a poster exhibition, um, which will be just like there'll be some catering, some pizza and stuff. And I always do prizes. So there'll be student choice for best content, student choice for favorite design. And then there's also a teaching team choice for best overall assignment. And those prizes will be a $30 gift voucher to wherever you want from any online store. So a bit of incentive to come and vote as well. And pizza is a good incentive too. Um, I'll talk to you about timing, but we may not do it in the class time. Like we might do it like on early on a Friday night or something. Um, we'll see how everyone goes with their work schedules and stuff. I'll get back to you with the um, exact due date. Last year, the CUBE people let us give them the posters the day before. This time, they want them two weeks before. So I'm trying to negotiate that down with them. Okay, so assignment two is your learning blog, and this is the one that really starts next week. Um, we get you to submit your posts each Sunday. Sometimes they won't be a lot of work. Sometimes it mightn't be a post. It might just be asking you to put something in the activity feed for your peers. Um, that's worth 50%. Um, 
Part of that 50% is your participation in the learning community as well. We mark it at mid-semester, as I said earlier, and then we mark again at end of semester. So I usually do it about week eight or nine, but I'll talk to you about that date in terms of what works best for you guys with getting feedback. Um, and I get you to, uh, we basically look at your blog and we look at all the posts you've written up until that date and we give you one mark and feedback for all of those posts. Then um, at the end of semester, we mark everything from that point to the end of semester um, in the same way. Um, okay, so ways that you can participate in the learning community, including commenting on each other's blogs, sharing links, um, participating in discussions, starting discussions is great. Helping each other, so if someone needs help with something, helping each other is a great way to do things as well, to earn some uh, participation marks too. Okay, assignment three is a case study, and this is worth 25%. This will just go on your blog as well. Um, it will be um, a task where you pick up, pick an event or um, something that happened in social media land and you identify, analyze and critically discuss it um, and talk about what um, you know, issue or concept is appearing there. For example, last year when I was teaching this unit, um, the Himalayan earthquakes happened and so we kind of watched live as that evolved. And so you could write your case study about an event like the Himalayan earthquakes and, um, and how social media played a role in helping people to find people and you know, to make sure their family was okay and all, how news disseminated and all those kinds of things. So it doesn't have to be a current event. It can be something that happened in the past. Um, but to pick up one thing that you've seen happen in social media that interested you and then relate it back to what we've talked about in the unit. And that will be due at the end of semester. So along with that, um, it'll be just a short blog post. Um, of, I haven't entirely decided how long yet. I think 500, won't give you, 500 words won't give you enough space to kind of say what you need to say. So I'm gonna make it 500 to 1,000 and you can then fit it into that, that kind of range there. Would you mind flicking the aircon switch? Thanks. Um, so, oh, sorry, I forgot, it's a lightning talk. So it's a short video. So you just need to make a short video and pop it up on your blog. Um, I did this as a blog post last year, but I think that I'd like to have some assessment that isn't written, just in case some of you aren't particularly uh, feeling like that's your best medium. Um, and so I'll get you to make a short video and embed it in your blog, along with a curated set of resources. So maybe a Pinterest board with some um, images that you've found that are related to the topic, or if you're doing something like the Himalayan earthquake, you might embed some tweets um, in your site. It doesn't have to be curated in a particular, um, with a particular tool. You can do it in any way you want to. Um, but pulling in some bits of social media con content that relate to that event. Does that make sense? Cool. So lightning talks are just really fast, short presentations. They usually give you, I think it's about 20 seconds per slide, um, and you have a set number of slides. I find that really arbitrary and unhelpful. So as long as it fits within the length requirement for the video, that's all good. Yeah, Padlet could be really good for that, okay? You're right. Um, so I always negotiate the assessment criteria in my units. So over the weekend, I will put, uh, make these assessment pages live for you. And then you'll have an opportunity to look at the assessment requirements and the criteria sheets and tell me how you feel about them. Um, and I do this because I think it's really important for you to be able to tailor the assessment to work for you and to tailor it so that um, you're pushing yourself to learn particular things that you want to learn through the unit. Okay, now let's whiz through the boring stuff really, really quickly. I hate this rule with a passion. Um, but I have to enforce it, so please don't submit anything late because I really hate giving people 0%. With the first assignment, the blog post, the, the blog, or the, actually the second assignment, if you're running late getting one of your blogs in on a Sunday night, don't submit a formal extension request, just shoot me an email um, because really that's not the hugest big deal. Um, but if you need an extension for assignment one or assignment two, or even for the final submission of the blogs at the end of semester, you need to submit an extension request. I'm not sure if you guys realize, but we don't know when you've submitted an extension. We only find out um, if, we, if you get it. So we get an email saying you got it. So if your um, extension request gets um, turned down, I don't ever find out that you've asked for an extension. So when you ask for an extension, please email me as well, um, just to make sure that I'm in the loop with what's happening and um, I can help you to make sure that you get your extension and get your work in. 
It's an awful rule. We all hate it, and unfortunately, we have to live with it. And as you guys know, you can request an extension up to 4 p.m. on the day an assignment is due. I make all of my due dates Sunday night so that people who work have got the weekends to do things. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get in touch with me on a Sunday, but just shoot me an email too, and um, we'll work it out on Monday morning. Okay, so um, I'm not going to hold your hand through this process. You guys need to be in charge of your own learning and making sure you're working through the content. Um, you need to be a good community member in this unit, not just because I want you to be, but because you have to be for assessment. Um, it's important that you are organised because you're going to be completing bits of your assessment every week. On the plus side, you're going to get to the end of the semester and not have a 50% assignment due because you've been working on it all semester. But you need to be organised in order to make sure you keep up with it. Um, try things, make mistakes, share your opinions. The community will only work if you're willing to share your opinions. Um, so share them and um, be respectful of other people when they share theirs. I mentioned earlier all questions about the unit or assessment should be posted on Google Plus and you can email me personal questions. Um, just to reiterate, uh, the QUT spam filter eats up my email all the time, so please email me from your student address so that I definitely get your email. And before you ask me a question or send me an email, please just take two minutes to look over the unit site and see if you can find the information. Um, it is all there, or it will be after I make those assessment pages live. Um, so please go through and have a look before um, you get in touch. If someone else has a question, please spend some time and help them out as well. If you need to make a consultation, you'll need to contact me two business days in advance. I'm ve very rarely at my desk. Um, and I'm not on campus a great deal. Um, so if you need me, um, don't, don't come to the office, just give me a call because I won't be there and we've got, we're in a secure building so you won't be able to get upstairs anyway. Um, so book a consultation if you need one on, uh, on campus via Skype or phone. Um, I'll get back to you in two business days if you send me an email. Please don't resend your email within two business days because it just makes it harder for me to get through my inbox and respond to you. Um, this is what I promise to be this semester, so I'll be responsive and get back to you as quickly as I can. We'll get back to your social media posts on the same day. We're going to be flex as flexible as we possibly can. As I said, all classes will be recorded and live streamed as well. Um, you'll have lots of options for how you can participate. Um, we're in the community and we're going to be learning with you, so I always learn stuff in this unit. For example, I, did, I, don't, I still don't really get Snapchat. Do you guys use Snapchat? Yeah, okay. So I don't, yeah, I don't get Snapchat at all. I think if you want to take a photo, just why wouldn't you put it on Instagram? Like, why, why would you want it to just disappear? And then I heard about ugly selfies, where you, like, deliberately post an ugly selfie on Snapchat. It's a very interesting concept to me. I feel very old. Um, so I learned stuff too. And Reddit, for example. I wasn't a Reddit user until last year, and everyone in the class loved it. Did you guys into Reddit? Interestingly, everyone in the class last year told me they didn't read blogs, but they use Reddit, which often the content kind of starts out inspired by a post or linked to, or that kind of, the forum style commenting is similar to what would happen on a blog. Like it's similar to old school forums as well, but it's a similar type of content. And people were using things like um, Flipboard for curated content but they didn't realise that the content that they were reading in Flipboard was actually a blog post, um, using Zyte as well. Zyte's dead now, I think, actually. It was a, um, a, a surface due content based on what you read. But I think that's died now as well. So just um, have a think about what's behind the technology, I guess, is the message there. But So I will learn that stuff from you guys as well. Um, we'll be as thorough as we can with the assignment briefs, and if you've got any questions, just ask. We'll be happy to clarify. Um, and we will give you good detailed feedback on your assessment. Um, we also promise to be organised, so the readings and materials will be ready on a Monday morning. Um, I will try to work further out if I can, but I don't like to go too far out because I think it's good to do it all in sequence. And we'll get your assessment back to you in two weeks. Uh, later. Okay, so social media ground rules, you've got to talk to each other. This is all common sense. Create an online identity. Um, we'll be talking about this next week. Um, opinions are really good, but just um, say it with a smile. So don't be uh, deliberately awful, no trolling. Um, think about people's boundaries as well. It's a unit about social technology, but people still might not want to connect with you on Facebook because that's kind of like your lounge room, not your classroom. 
Um, and think about privacy. So some people will probably use, there'll be, there's always one or two people in my classes who choose to use a pseudonym on the site. Hi, IAB260. Cool. Um, so there'll be some people uh, in my class who always choose to use a pseudonym. If they use a pseudonym, please use their pseudonym. Don't out them as with their real name because, oh my goodness, go away. Um, so yeah, just respect um, people's privacy in that way. We don't all have the same boundaries as other people. Um, okay, so this is the usual spiel about um, availability, but all I really want to say is I do tend to work a lot, but sometimes I need a day off. Sometimes I'm made to have a day off. Um, I check my email on Saturday afternoons at about 4 or 5 o'clock, and I spend an hour responding to email then and answering social media content. Um, so if you need something, um, just keep in mind that I do have that hour on a Saturday afternoon when you can catch me. Um, I usually... Uh, I'll let you know in the lead up to assi assignment due dates when the cutoffs will be to get your questions in before the assignment's due. Um, but just keep in mind that um, I, I am paid to work 40 hours a week. I don't work 40 hours a week, but um, don't expect me to get back to you in, at you know, 10 o'clock at night. Sometimes I will, but it's not a good thing to rely on. Okay, so that was it in terms of what I wanted to tell you about the unit. Did you guys have any questions you wanted to ask? Is everything clear? So maybe, okay. Any questions in the online classroom? Uh, no, but, well, that's a good question. The question was, where are webcams um, going to be used in any of the future classes or will other people need them? Um, the answer to that question is, uh, it depends on what you guys decide in terms of how you want to run classes. If we do run fully online classes, then yeah, we might use webcams. Um, but otherwise, no. Why are you still flashing? Oh, okay. There's another question coming online, I think. Yep, I'll post slides on the workshops for the workshops, but my slides tend to look like the one on the screen right now. They don't tend to have a great deal of content on them. Um, so, yes, I'll put them up, but they're not always going to have heaps of stuff on them. Any other questions? None at all. It's Friday. You've all been here all week and had enough, right? Yeah. At least it's not Friday night. I usually have to teach on Friday night, 6 till 9. So, yeah, at least you're not here at 8 o'clock on a Friday night. Yeah, there's some typing online, so we'll just wait for this last question. And then we will wrap up. Nope, I don't think there's a question. Okay, so um, what's up next? Next week's learning resources will go up on Monday. I'll send you a link to the poll about classes. Um, there'll be a short orientation video about the functionality on the site over the weekend, and I'll be making those assessment briefs live um, for you to review and look at the assessment criteria. Um, if you've got any questions at all, please post them on the site or shoot me an email. Um, and that's it. Have a good weekend. Only some weeks. You'll have to check the schedule. And uh, whether we have the final examination in this unit. Sorry, the final? Final examination. No exams. No exams. Three assignments, no exams. Just three assignments. Yeah. Uh, whether they have the group assignment? No group assignment. Oh, all, all individual? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. All the good stuff is gone. Yeah, I love individual. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. Is there a limit? Because if we get into the OBD, we can do some reading. No, there's no limit. Um, 
There would be themes and stuff for WordPress. Can you change the themes in the fonts and stuff? You can, but I've got to upload the themes for you. Oh, it's just the back end of it. Yeah. So if you want to have a look at that.